guys, Tom here, Permaculture Wilmington. Today we are making some worm tea. A lot of my friends on here on my permaculture group, Permaculture Wilmington on Facebook, have been asking about worm tea. Um, and a lot of people are interested actually. There's a guy in town that's really well known that does nothing but make worm tea and makes a living off of it apparently. He's so good at it. And I watch some of his videos and really it's just a matter of the, the uh, device that he uses doesn't inject air like this, it creates this vortex and keeps the, the uh, microbes and the water moving in a, a vortex pattern, which he says is the natural way water wants to move. And it makes total sense, and I understand that, but there's no reason we can't do the same thing right here with some air. So all they need is oxygen, and that's what we're doing. I just put an air tube in here and I put a weight on it, and I, uh, I painted the weights because, you know, um, there's fungus in here, and fungus are uh, nutrient accumulators and mineral accumulators. So, and they're also bioremediators, which means they can pull up all kinds of stuff from the soil and rejuvenate the soil. So, um, lead is a heavy metal, and that's one of the things that fungus, fungus can actually accumulate. So, I just went ahead and, and painted the, the, um, the weights so that they would hold it down. And I got two of them in here, both of them are painted. And that's that real hard kind of uh, paint that you use for fishing lures. So, it's just a powder, you heat up the, the lead and you dip it in and it, it, it uh, coats the lead with a nice coating to keep things from getting to the lead and you know, keep it from, from degrading and deteriorating. A uh, very hard substance, guys, but um, right now we've, we're testing the temperature and it needs to be um, about the same, actually the, the same temperature that it is outside. So when you put your microbes, and that's what we're doing here, we're populating microbes in here. So when you put your, your, your buddies, this is all the organisms, um, out into the soil, you don't want to, to just take them from like one environment and throw them into a completely different environment. So it needs to be somewhat similar. And right now it's getting to be about 70 degrees outside, so I'm gonna go ahead and make this in my house um, because my house is about 70 degrees. And you can see right here uh, on the thermometer, it is indeed just over 70, so very exciting there. So that's good. Um, so what we're gonna be doing here is putting in some mycorrhizal inoculant, which is basically just a cup of spores. All right, so that's basically all this is. This powder is just a whole bunch of spores um, from a lot of, well, not a whole lot. There's 300 kinds of, or 300 species of mycelium in one square foot of fertile soil on average across the globe. So when you look at those numbers and then you look at, there, there's only like maybe eight um, different kinds of mycelium. Where is it at? There it is. So there's only like eight, I don't know if you can see that, it might be blurry, but there's, there's a, let me see, let me count them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's only seven kinds of, uh, it says endomycorrhizal gram. So endomycorrhizal fungus, and these are the different kinds. Oh, wait a minute, and there's, so there's actually 16. There's ecto and endo, okay, very good. So guys, there's 16 kinds of mycelium in here, but still, there's 300 species in the soil on average. So this is definitely going to help if nothing else, because we definitely need mycelium, and these are the ones that my understanding is the most beneficial it are the ones that are, are, are in the inoculants that we're buying, or at least they're supposed to be. I mean, unless you do it yourself, there's really no guaranteeing uh, the way the market works, you know? So, um, but what I'm going to do is take a dry spoon. Dry spoon is very important, and it only takes a very small amount. These are spores, millions of spores. Mil I'd say, Definitely, yeah, it's millions. I'm pretty sure about that. So we're just going to add just a little bit in here, and that's really all it takes. It's just a little bit like that. And I've already got my, my uh, worm tea in here. There was about two quarts that I got from my worm bin underneath in the, the uh, collection chamber and just pulled it out. It's really just an oil bucket that I use for my motorcycle, but I decided to slide it under my worm bin, which is a bathtub that I got from a remodeling job that I did. All right, guys, got a little kelp. And I don't really measure kelp. Um, I just kind of put some in so you guys can take a look. I'll measure it for you, though, just so you can see about how much I'm putting in here. Um, a bit more. That's all we need. Remember, they're microbiology. They're super teeny tiny. So that's, that's like a buffet that'll last several weeks at this point. Um, but they're only going to live in this bucket for 24 to 48 hours, so you got to keep that in mind. Um, and then just a touch of molasses, not much, and I want you guys to see just how much I'm putting on here because it is not much. Woo, that's actually twice as much as I need. 
Um, getting a little carried away there, guys. A little crazy. Um, but you guys can see here, you just kind of stir it right in. There we go. Um, now I'm going to let this sit for about 24 hours. So uh, probably tomorrow. I wouldn't let it sit more than a day and a half. Um, just because of the microbiology, they don't live very long out of the soil. In the soil, they'll reproduce and continue to grow for a very long time. Um, but in a bucket or out of the soil, for some reason, uh, I haven't really done a lot of research on that one, but they don't live anywhere near as long as they do in their natural environment. Um, but a fungus will, I'll tell you that, uh, we've got fungus that we've been, um, we've had in bags, and I'll show you here. That might actually might be interesting. Um, so just to let you guys see. This is, uh, what, what is this? This is Hand of the Woods. So this is maitake. If you guys are familiar with gourmet maitake mushrooms, um, where we grow them on these logs in these bags. Uh, this is an oak log, and then I put it out in the yard and bury it under my wood chips uh, like this so that the water gets into the top and, and soaks the, the wood continuously. And for every pound of log you have, like if this is six pounds, this will last six years, and we'll get about a pound to a pound and a half off of it each year. Um, well, if it lasts six years, then and it's six pounds, then we'd get about a pound off. Is how that math works. So, but it, it's not exact science. Like it's not. You might get a pound and a half one year, and you might get a half a pound another. You see what I'm saying? Um, so it just depends on the weather, the environment, and the, the uh, strain of mushroom. We've got a whole bunch of them. I'll get another one to show you. This is one my uh, girlfriend Jess is really excited about. This is chicken of the woods, and it works in a similar manner. Um, so we just sit the log in, but you see this is orange, and it's a, a sulfur shelf mushroom, so it's a real pretty, but um, that's, we basically do the same thing, just bury it in the logs out, or the wood chips outside in the ground, and then it fruits out the top, and comes right out of the ground, and we just walk around and see mushrooms popping up. And it's pretty cool, guys, if you haven't tried it, but I know for a fact mushrooms, uh, or mycelium, will live a very long time. So we can keep mycelium alive in water. Um, I've done it, I've had it up to a year in my refrigerator. I've got liquid cultures of mycelium tissue, and uh, so I've kept it alive uh, for a, an entire year, but I have to take it out and oxygenate it every now and then, so I can't just leave it in my fridge. So that tells me that the mycelium that we just put in, um, which is the great white, um, and there's 16 different, different types of mycelium, different species that we're putting in here. There's endo and ectomycorrhizal. And if you guys haven't checked out the videos that I posted about the mushrooms that have been flushing in our, our fruiting chamber, check those out. They're very cool. It's a Permaculture Wilmington YouTube channel, right? Have a great day.